Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite tanking team in the Bay Area. On today's episode, the Sharks lose their fourth straight game, uh, losing 6-3 to three to St. Louis Blues. And we're going to continue to talk about the trade deadline um, and what to expect going into Friday. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked On Sharks. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin, R.I.P., and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. We cover your team every day. And of course, you can find us wherever you get podcasts and you can watch us on YouTube as well. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, this has been an amazing week on YouTube. I appreciate everybody who's been watching, uh, watching all the videos, watching you know, all the content, um, subscribing, all the comments, all that fun stuff. So I uh, appreciate you guys. It's been one of my best weeks ever uh this week on youtube so um you guys keep up the great work as well um so sharks lose six to three um and you don't want to hear me talk about how the sharks lose six to three and i don't want to talk about how the sharks continue to lose so we'll kind of quickly talk about this game and then we'll talk more trade deadline stuff because that's what's more important right now and that's what you want to listen to because again we have seen this picture from the Sharks all year long of them losing games. And they've now lost four straight games. Um, this puts them fourth. We're tied with the Ducks for points um, right now at 48. The Ducks do have the tiebreaker. Um, with, so it's the first tiebreaker is regulation wins. The Ducks only have 10. Uh, and the Sharks have 14. The Ducks have more wins, but they they have 20 wins, but only 10 of them have been regulation. Uh, the Sharks have 18 wins, but 14 of them have been regulation. So that is the first tiebreaker. So just a little something to keep in mind here. Um, but this game, kind of what we've seen, the formula from the Sharks recently, right? Great first period. Barabanov scores. Beautiful goal from Barabanov. Um, Andreas Johnson gets his first point in teal with a kind of a nice little lob pass. And then Barabanov just kind of does his thing, um, deeks the defender. Great uh, shot, five hole. And you're thinking, okay, this is what Barabanov done, does, right? Um, Logan Couture scores is 2 0. Um, great feed from Eric Carlson. He makes a great play, corrals the puck. Uh, nice little drop pass, Couture snipe. Uh, two nothing after the first period, and uh, the Blues. I tweeted out the Blues are a stinky team, and the Blues are a stinky team. But the Sharks, they dug deep when they had to, uh, and they forgot how to play hockey. And <laughs> it was just sloppy in the second and third period, just massive giveaways, uh, defensive breakdowns, and poor James Reimer just got hung out to dry basically the rest of the night as you give up um, four goals, uh, two power play goals uh, in the second period, and kind of the Sharks were off to the races there. So um, let's look at kind of the four lines, especially didn't really get a chance to do that against the Canadians. I uh, wanted to kind of see how some of these new four lines look. And then we'll talk about kind of whatever's coming up. I have my phone, like, in case anything happens. I don't think anything's going to happen this late at night just because, like, the trade office is probably closed right now. Uh, whoever's running the fax machine is probably just hanging out or probably asleep because it's 1 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. But if anything happens, you might get a, like, live reaction. So, all right. Uh, Zettelin, Hurdle, and Johnson – uh, played 14-28, time on ice together, 11 shot attempts, 4-12 allowed, actual shots was 1-5, to five. so they were taking a lot of shots and just not getting home there. Um, expected goals, 4 was 0.17, gave up 0.68, expected goals allowed. Yeah, more different, 5 offensive, 4 neutral, 5 defensive zones, so, so interesting to see how 
now that the team is getting picked apart and new pieces are coming in, how David Quinn's going to kind of utilize these guys. So uh, Bear Banoff, Kator, Benino played 1036, 10 shot attempts, four, six allowed, um, nine shots on goal. Gave up five, did have the two goals. Expected goals for his 0.57 best on the team. Um, three high danger chances, gave up three as well. Five, five, five. Um, zone starts. Svechnikov, Sturm, and Gregor was next with 952 time on ice. Seven shot attempts, gave up four. Actual shots was two to two, did give up a goal. Um, Three, five, and four for their zone starts. And Limblom, Lawrence, and LeBanc. Nine shot attempts, gave up eight. Actual shots was four to five, but did give up two goals. Uh, expected goals for is 0.52. So interesting there that they created quality chances. Um, had six scoring chances, two high danger, but um, gave up two goals. So with mostly positive zone starts, two offensive, and four neutral zone starts. So... You know, I mean, just the this team is what it is right now. Uh, it just is. Poor James Reimer, uh, tough, tough night for him. So, all situations, um, yeah, he just wasn't sharp tonight. And plus, I mean, the Blues had 22 shots. Uh, he made 17 saves for 773 save percentage. Um, eight high danger, seven saves. That's nice. One uh, goal. Mid danger though was nine of uh, or six six saves on nine shots, and then four low danger ones as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean we we've seen kind of the mixing and matching of the defensive pairs, right? Ferraro and Carlson are back together. Does not feel like a good partnership. Um, I think Carlson needs a defenseman partner who will be a like stay 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 at home defenseman and ferraro is a like you know he is a defensive defenseman but that's not kind of his forte if that makes sense right um he kind of is a little bit more active and i think what happens is they both try to activate at the same time and we've seen this now two games in a row with them giving up kind of both trying to like be aggressive at the same time um so we wonder how much longer that will last. Um, if Quinn tries to find another partner for Carlson uh, throughout the, the end of the season here, but or if he just wants to kind of let these two guys ride and figure it out, um, knowing full well that Eric Carlson's probably getting traded in the summer, so it's not like it's a, a long-term solution that they got to figure out right now. So six to three. You lose to the Blues. The Blues snap. Uh, it's good for the Sharks because the Blues snapped like a six-game losing streak um, or a four-game losing streak, I think it was, actually. Sorry. No, it was six games, actually. Um, they lost a lot of games in a row. So good for the Sharks here to kind of keep them in their own tier there, um, keep up to pace with the um, Blackhawks who lost tonight um, and the Canucks who also lost tonight. So no kind of changes or movement or ground um in, in the old tank of thought standings that's what matters the most right now is draft position so draft position trades um all that fun stuff so before we look at who's out the door who's probably on their way out look at potential call-ups who you're going to have to fill these spots right um so who's kind of available on the roster to be filled up uh, let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. So, Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and a delicious treat that's covered in 100% real chocolate. Great thing about them, though, is they come in amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, and almond. And... Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. If you're like me, you don't like waiting for stuff to come in the mail. Now, you can head over to Walmart. You can head over to Sam's Club uh, to pick up a box today at Walmart. So they have a 4-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. That's over in the pharmacy section. Or you go to Sam's Club if you have one near you. Grab a 13-bar box of their brownie batter and churro. 
You can thank me later. Or go to built.com where they have new flavors kind of coming in all the time. I like the variety box, kind of has a little bit of everything. So if you're feeling kind of minty one day, get the mint chocolate one. Or if you want, you know, some cookies and cream, they've got you covered with a bunch of different ones. That way you can find out whichever is your flavor. So <clears throat> head over to built.com, Walmart, or Sam's Club today to grab yourself a box. And when you're done with that, um, Make sure you want to stock up on Built Bars because the NHL trade deadline is tomorrow or Friday as you're listening to this. Uh, join us live on the Lockdown NHL YouTube channel from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time, um, 11 to 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. Pacific time as the Lockdown NHL hosts, including myself, um, break down the biggest deals from across the league. Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so it sounds like we, we had a, an official hug watch after the game. Um, Reimer and Benino, I'm checking my phone right now. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like anything's going to happen right now, but we're still kind of just waiting. Um, those are the two guys um, I think are as good as gone. Nick Benino, you know, if you're a, a team that wants a guy who's going to come in, penalty, good, good penalty killer, can win draws, play on your bottom six, going to be a good guy in the locker room. Nick Benino is a perfect guy for that. Um, Compensation-wise, I mean, you're probably looking like a fourth or fifth, you know, kind of the Cogliano deal from uh, last year, right? Fifth-round pick for Cogliano. I think a fourth or fifth is probably in the same boat there. So, um, yeah, look for a team, you know, look for one of these kind of, especially the East Coast, I would assume it's probably an East Coast team. Um, as the, the arms race continues over there, you know, and, and for the sharks, right. They only have, so retention slots, remember they can only have, they can only retain three salaries at any given time right now. Um, you've already retained one with Brent Burns and you've retained one with Timo Myers. So they can only retain one more salary. Um, so Benino's salary is little over two million dollars so i think a team and again it's all they have to do is kind of fit in the rest of the the season type of here right now um so one nick benino his remaining remaining uh daily cap hit is 400 or 454 thousand uh 324 so um that's all a team really has to fit in right we we would basically 20 games left you have to a team just needs like five hundred thousand dollars at cap space to, to kind of fit him in so yes um that's that's kind of where the, where he's at right now james reimer like i said i expect him to be gone as well um who knows with goalies like what they actually get um his kind of a similar caps hit right his is a little 202 million $250,000, his uh, kind of cap it for the rest of the year is a little bit under 500000 as well. So, again, it just as long as the team is, just has that much cap space right now, uh, they'll be able to fit it in. So, those are the two. And then, of course, um, the Sharks' newest uh, names, Demidowski. Sorry, you guys know. Um, he's not going to be here either. So, I expect him to be traded as well. He only his cap hit is a little bit over a million dollars. Um, I would expect that the Sharks should not have to retain on that. Uh, as, again, especially since they've already kind of and his would be um 20, yeah, his daily cap is a little over two, a little under 300, so thousand dollars. Like, again, it's it won't take much to fit these guys under the cap, so um. If the Sharks want to kind of facilitate a trade, they still have plenty of cap space. Um, you know, they do have some cap space in that they can kind of weaponize. Not that much, but they do have some cap space if they want to be a third party to retain a salary as well. Um, and then, you know, so if like we've we you see it all the time, right? Um, the Wild have actually done this a couple times this year of you know, throw me a fourth round pick, throw me a fifth round pick. We'll eat some of this salary, especially if your team up against the cap. But um, we'll see. They don't have a ton of ton of cap space left. So, and they you can only again one more. They can only retain one more. So that's kind of the big key right there. 
Uh, another move the Sharks did make today as well. Um, they signed Derek Pouliot to an NHL deal and then put him on waivers. And a lot of people were like, what's the deal, bro? Um, Derek Pouliot was on a AHL only deal. So he could only play for the Barracuda, right? Um, he To play for the Sharks, he had to sign an NHL deal. And then um, basically if they want him to be able to bounce between the Sharks and the Barracuda, I assume they want him to continue to play on the Barracuda. And then it's a break glass in case of emergency. If they trade a defenseman, whatever. Pouliot can come up and play in the NHL. Guy who's played NHL games, you know exactly what you're getting with Derek Pouliot. Um, so he has to clear waivers, though. That is, it's just, we see this right right before the actual season start, right? The Sharks put a bunch of guys, every team puts a bunch of guys on waivers. Um, that way it makes, that way they can go down and play um, in the, uh, in, sorry, they, where they can go down and play in the NA or the AHL. So, you know, like Andrew Agazino, right? Signed. This off, Andrew Agazino, CJ Cease, right? Those guys are all signed this offseason with the intention that they're most likely not going to be playing in the NHL, but put you know, sign NHL deals. You put them down there in the AHL, you know, they have to go through waivers, they have to go through the waiver process. Um, if you're not, you know, maybe a team claims Derek Pouliot, I would be a little surprised, but um, you never know. Scott Harrington uh, was, it was actually, you know, yeah, Scott Harrington was, was claimed. So, which is really funny to me, Scott Harrington was claimed, but that's uh, a different story. So guys like that, right? These guys who, you know, especially the older guys, they have, they do have to actually go through waiver claims to be able to play, um, play it, continue to play in the AHL. So it just gives the Sharks a little bit of flexibility. So in case like you trade, because right now, Here's the Sharks defenseman, right? You have Eric Carlson. He's not getting traded. Vlasic, not getting traded. Ferraro, probably not getting traded. Not getting traded. Shimmick, me, you know, if a team asks. Matt Benning, if a team asks. Like, you know, Jacob McDonald, he's basically making nothing if a team asks type of situation. So um, that's why I'm, those guys I think could, could potentially be. Um, be, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Th those guys could be uh, eventually could be traded. And I think it just gives Mike Greer a little bit of flexibility. That way, they're not scrambling to try to uh, find a replacement uh, defenseman. And it also, you know, gives Pulley that little bump, gives him a little bit of extra cash, uh, especially for you know, kind of being a good soldier this year. You know, and looking at, I think one of the big things that it does tell me. Um, Nikolai Kanijov, maybe they're not, maybe they just want to let him continue to play with the Bear Crew this year. They, don't, they feel like don't want to rush him back from his injury. He's just kind of started playing back to back games um, with the Bear Cuda. Maybe not, they don't feel he's quite ready for NHL time right now. Um, let him continue to just kind of play out the rest of the, the season, right? Chichek, uh, you know, can go up and down right now, but apparently maybe they're not happy with how that's going with, with him this year. So um, again, it just gives them flexibility in case uh, they need to grab a defenseman. You have Derek Pouliot, who's played a bunch of NHL games and, and can jump up and play for you right away. So um, before we get into look at kind of the rest of the Sharks roster, um, who might be gone and then who might be replacing these guys. Um, so we'll do a little enjoy some roster talk here in a minute for the rest of the season do want to take a quick break talk to you guys about our friends over at indeed so right now if you're hiring you need indeed because indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract interview and hire all in one place and indeed is the only job site where you can you're guaranteed to find quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. 
Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of qualified candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job, job description. You can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only have to pay for a quality applicant quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need indeed. All right, let's pull up the cap friendly page here. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, you got the cap friendly page. I don't know how it's, a, it's not the biggest, but I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, let me take, do some of my stuff here. Okay. So sharks right now, again, so you have looking at the forwards, right? Um, they have 13 forwards that are up right now. Um, Hurdle's not going anywhere, right? Couture's not going anywhere. LeBanc, maybe, but I doubt it. I think his salary um, is too prohibitive, especially with another year at base, almost $5 million. Uh, Andreas Johnson, he just got here. He's not going anywhere. Lindblom, um, not going anywhere, especially for his salary. I, I don't expect that. Barabanov, I think the Sharks really like him. It would have to be kind of blown away. I mean, he's really come on at the end of um, the end of the season here now. Uh, Nick Benino, he's going to be gone. Nico Sturm, um, I think the Sharks would have to be kind of blown away. Um, so he would definitely help a team kind of like Nick Benino. Um, he helped the Avs last season. He's been a great addition to the Sharks this year. Probably you could argue he's been been the Sharks' best offseason signing. Um, but again, I think I think the three years makes it a little bit a little bit less likely that he gets moved. So um Vladislav and then name Stavsky. Sorry guys. Uh he's gone. One yeah, he's gone. Like he's not even in San Jose. Um that's yeah, he's gone. Siva Lorenz, interesting, right? Um I think he's really kind of upped his value. Um he's got basically a million dollars, uh a little over a million dollars this year and next year. Yeah, can play center, can play wing, good penalty killer. Sure, you know, added scored a shorthanded goal. Like, if a team came asking for Steve Lorenz, would you be surprised? So, um, I don't think it happens, but again, uh, Noah Gregor, yeah, I don't think anybody's asking, but who knows? Um, he's RFA, so he's cost controlled, right, for the next year as well, too. So, if you're a cap, uh, crunch team. No, you know, you want to take, you want to add some speed, but no scoring. Uh, no, Gregor is your man. So maybe gone, but I doubt it. Uh, and then uh, Zetterlin, he's not, he just got here and he was a, kind of one of the major uh, pieces of the trade. He's not leaving right now. Uh, and then Svesh the cough. So we'll say Benino for sure. So that opens up one spot. And then we'll just kind of, we'll, uh, and then name Shkoff says two. Two for sure. So that puts the Sharks at 11 forwards right now. You need at least 12 to play hockey. Last time I checked, or you should be icing 12, right? Um, yeah. And then you could potentially lose another one if somebody asks for, you know, we'll just say three slots right now that, that the Sharks are going to have to kind of fill. So among other forwards, so we have Gadovich who has started working out again, but I don't know how close he is to return. So he's still an IR. So the Sharks forwards, um, I think potential guys, right? You have Martin Kaut, who has already been up with the Sharks this year, came down. Um, you wonder if he's kind of the next guy, especially a guy who's been playing a bunch of um you know, he's kind of played played a bunch, a fair amount of NHL games right now. Bordolo, we'll see. Um, he's been kind of playing like the wing and then some fourth line minutes for the Barracuda. Um, was really, really quiet recently until his last game, I think, which was one of his best games recently. 
So he's, of course, a candidate. And, of course, William Eklund. Um, we'll see with him because, of course, he's still – so he has his – he's still considered a slide candidate. So the Sharks maybe, if they don't want him to play um, more NHL games to kind of continue to kick off – push his ELC down. But I don't know. I think, like, you're pinching pennies for no reason type of thing um for for him so we shall see what what they do with him there but i mean those those are your three big ones um jeffrey vl you know has has played really well for the bear crew this year maybe you want to reward him as well and then i don't think you'd pull up andrew agazino to be the only other guy i would really kind of think about because he's been playing really well for the bear crew but he's also the bear crew's captain so yeah Uh, sorry, my voice is starting to go. So I would assume it's probably going to be like a Cout. I would assume Cout gets kind of the first crack. And then I would hope Eklund, who's worked very hard all season, would get his opportunity as well. Don't pinch pennies for no reason right now. Um, and then Jeffrey Vial, but that's Again, remember, he got a call up when they were in Montreal um, and got to play then. So... And he's, you know, he's played pretty well for the, the Barracuda. So if you want to reward a guy for having a, a pretty solid season. So those are kind of the three names that I would look at. The other guys, I know like Reedy was up last year, but he's had a really quiet season with the Barracuda and he just got back from an injury. Um, Coe's not ready. Raska, like Ozzy's not ready. Tristan Robbins isn't ready. Gushin's not ready. Like a lot of these other guys just aren't ready to be NHL contributors right now. So those are kind of the names that I would look at as they try to replenish. Or again, don't be surprised if Mike Greer is adding adding some piece, some young pieces as well too. So on the defense, I don't think it's going to be like I said. I don't really think there's going to be much tra trades. And if you do, right, you do have uh, Chichek and then Pouliot. I think who will be your first kind of guys that you're going to look to to bring up. Um, We'll see with Kanijov. Like I said earlier, I think Kanijov, I wouldn't be surprised if they just want to let him marinate the rest of the season and kind of get back to playing hockey, especially since he hasn't played hockey. This is his first time playing hockey in almost two years. So let him marinate in the AHL this year. And then, you know, he's cost controlled. He's an RFA. If you want to, you know, you can sign him to another small deal and then let him play, you know, earn come to camp with a, a chance to earn a spot. So, so yeah, those are, those are my picks of who i think um of course you know me i want william Eklund to play um so i'm hoping he is one of the call-ups but we'll know i mean the barracuda they're at home they play friday night um so we'll we'll know you know maybe if they call him up friday night because they wanted them to be able to because the sharks play saturday at three and then the barracuda play saturday night as well so um be interesting to see how they ha handle that so um yeah, that's going to do it. Like I said, I think it's going to be Cal. I think Martin Cal will definitely be up. Um, and then it just kind of depends on what Mike Greer wants to do from there. Again, I'm hoping William Eklund deserves his chance to shine. So, um, yeah, I will be on the Locked on NHL show. So make sure you guys are uh, watching that on YouTube. Um, it's there's a couple of us who are going to be doing it, and then we're going to be rotating a bunch of the guests in. But I'm going to be one of the uh, the main hosts for the day. So um, look at me now. Look at me now, mom. Anyway, follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Um, follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked On Sharks. Uh, you can listen wherever you get podcasts: Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music. Watch on YouTube as well. Um, I will also. Whatever the Sharks do, we'll, we'll try to do a Shark-specific live show on my own feed um, kind of early afternoon-ish, um, you know, maybe like a 1.30. Let's shoot for 1.30 or 2. We'll just kind of shoot for that time because, I, you know, 1.30 or 2, um, Friday afternoon, Locked on Sharks. We'll, you know, if it's 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, you know, cover whatever the Sharks do, um, I'm going to get you guys there. So until then, bye, friends.